Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the douay Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 50 in the douay Rheims Bible, but Psalm 51 in the RSV. Unto the end, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came to him after he had sinned with Bethsabee. King David most likely wrote this psalm, as he did many others. This psalm touches on topics that would have been very personal for David, and it's related to his central sin, plotting to endanger the life of Uriah so David could have his wife when he was dead. Bethsabee is Bathsheba, former wife of Uriah, and ultimately she did marry David and was the mother of Solomon, David's heir. This action against Uriah was serious enough that a prophet named Nathan was sent by God to tell David that he'd sinned, as well as what would happen because of his sin. David valued his relationship with God deeply, and in this psalm he expresses sorrow for the harm that he caused. That sorrow drives the entire psalm. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy, and according to the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my iniquity. Wash me yet more from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin a plea for God to use his power to obliterate the terrible sins that have been committed, so that they can no longer tarnish the speaker. For I know my iniquity, and my sin is always before me. I know I've done wrong. In fact, I can't escape from the thought of my sins, and I'm always reminded of them. To thee only have I sinned, and have done evil before thee, that thou mayst be justified in thy words, and mayst overcome when thou art judged. The evil that I have done has offended God, and because of that his judgment against me is fully justified. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities, and in sins did my mother conceive me. People are born in sin and evil, and it needs to be removed by God. For behold, thou hast loved truth. The uncertain and hidden things of thy wisdom thou hast made manifest to me. God loves the truth, and reveals hidden truths and guidance to the speaker. Thou shalt sprinkle me with hyssop, and I shall be cleansed. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. God has the power to purify any person, no matter how badly they've sinned. To my hearing thou shalt give joy and gladness, and the bones that have been humbled shall rejoice. A plea for God to give him reasons to be joyful, since he feels crushed by the seriousness of his sins. Turn away thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Another plea for purification from sin and evil. Create a clean heart in me, O God, and renew a right spirit within my bowels. In addition to pleading for purification again, this verse also implies a longing for an inclination towards good instead of sin, that our thoughts will be aimed towards righteousness rather than evil temptations. Cast me not away from thy face, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Don't abandon me because of my sins, don't withdraw your outer or inner blessings from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and strengthen me with a perfect spirit. Another plea for purification, and a longing for the joy that comes from being saved by God. I will teach the unjust thy ways, and the wicked shall be converted to thee. A promise to respond to the gifts that God gives by doing his will, and instructing other people in his ways. Deliver me from blood, O God. Thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall extol thy justice. O Lord, thou wilt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. I'll give praise to God if he purifies my spirit to save me from a terrible fate. The phrase, thou wilt open my lips, means that it's only because of God that David is even able to open his mouth. God gives us the ability to move our lips, and this allows us to do many good things with them, including praising God. For if thou hadst desired sacrifice, I would indeed have given it. With burnt offerings thou wilt not be delighted. A sacrifice to God is an afflicted spirit. A contrite and humbled heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Authentic penitence is more valuable to God than any kind of animal sacrifice. 
Deal favorably, O Lord, in thy good will with Zion, that the walls of Jerusalem may be built up. Willingly accept my sorrow for my sins, so that your blessings will come to me and to my city and the surrounding area. Then shalt thou accept the sacrifice of justice, oblations, and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they lay calves upon thy altar. If you accept my penitence, I'll also give you the other sacrifices that you value less. To us, this would be prayer, fasting, and the like. The main themes of this psalm are obviously penitence and sorrow for sins. The search for purification and forgiveness through God's mercy follow from those, and there are also value comparisons, placing authentic repentance into a place of high value, and outward signs and sacrifices into a place of much lower value. This makes sense, since outward signs and sacrifices can be done by anyone, whether they're actually sorry for their sins or not. People can't necessarily tell the difference, but God can. Next time, we'll be moving on to another topic for a new season. How to be more like Jesus, beginning with an episode about the devotion of Jesus. See you then. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.